My goal with this haircut is to make sure that I follow the angle, follow the chin line, and have a little bit of a forward fall to the front of the haircut. So I don't want to have it super extreme. I think when people think triangular, they overdirect everything really far back, and then it becomes too extreme in the front. I want it to be nice and soft. I'm also gonna cut it with a center parting. That way I can work on staying balanced on both sides. So center parting. So I'll just look right over the nose, comb it back, make my first part. I don't have to go all the way down center back at first. I'll continue that after I get this hair out of the way. So we'll saturate the hair. I wanna make sure that I keep the hair nice and saturated the entire time. You wanna keep only your elevation, your tension, your finger angle, all of that stuff consistent, but also um, the fabric of the hair should be consistent as well. All right, so we're gonna section the hair away. Now what I'm gonna do, just so that I can kind of cut this in half, I'm going to work across the occipital bone, from the occipital bone to behind the ear. Pretty standard sectioning. All right, so we'll comb this over. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'll comb the hair in the direction I want it to go, and then I'm gonna take a parting across the occipital bone over to behind the ear. If I put the comb flat just like this, you can see the angle that is created from the difference between this angle and up here, this angle, and then obviously here, this angle. Um, this is a round surface. So if I'm holding the hair here and I continue up the head shape, that elevation gets lower and lower as you go, even though your angle stays the same. So it's not so much about finger angle. We're taught in school that this is 45. This isn't 45. 45 at this point of the head is more like this, right? But 45 at this point of the head is like this. So you have to be really well aware of what the head shape is doing because your angle is gonna reflect and the weight and the density and everything in the haircut is gonna reflect the finger angle that you have. So. I'm going to part this side out of the way. So the way I'm going to work this triangular graduation is I want to make sure I'm working on a diagonal, the same angle that I want to create here, right? So that diagonal should follow through to the jawline. So I take that first parting and this is basically going to be 90 degrees straight out from the head and I'm going to cut my line. So bringing it back to me and cut the line. This is going to be a traveling guide. What I don't want to do is start over directing everything right away back here because that'll already push a lot of weight right behind. I want it to be more consistent across and then start to take its um, dive down. Now, those of you guys that get a hole back behind the ear, first off, don't freak out about a hole because sometimes a hole can happen, but honestly, we're going to cut into this so you can see how the, the hairline right here gets a little bit weaker. All of that in the dry cut, I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna follow this line that I'm creating. So I'm really focused on the weight line in the interior, not so much the line on the exterior. If you come around and you just cut shorter layers in here, then you're cutting around shape anyways. So you just need to know what you're doing. I'm cutting triangular, so as I get to the side here, everything is coming back to me. I'm not allowing my hand to go into that corner because it's triangular, so I don't wanna take off the corner, I guess you should say. And then I finish off using the line from that previous section. So now you will see, as I comb that down here, that's our weight. This, you've got your line, but then it goes up and away. But that's only because the hairline goes up and away. We could continue on this side, cut this whole side if we wanted to. I personally like to work both sides to make sure I have a nice balanced shape before I move on to the rest of the cut. We're going to change up our hand positioning a little bit. I'm gonna take a small diagonal forward parting that mimics the chin line, or the jaw line, not the chin line. We got the head tilt forward. Now here's the hardest part. The right side becomes harder because right away my elbow needs to go in the air in order to keep my fingers pointed down to get that consistency of my combing into the new section. Already, as I push this hair in, I wanna push it over and sometimes you can push it a little too far. Sometimes you have lower elevation. So that's the tricky part. That's my line. So that's what I want to continue this section into. So I hold this up in my hand. I can see my line through there. And that's what I want to mimic in the haircut. 
So two inches up. And when I say two inches up, I'm not really uh, being that specific but I'm already looking at it and I can see that it's two inches because I look at where the comb starts to bend on the head, right? So we're sitting here, this bend right here, that's where I wanna point it because that's where I know that the head shape is moving. So I wanna make sure that that's where I'm staying in line with. So that is our line working through the back. So now I'm gonna connect vertically straight out from the head. So I grab not even half an inch, not even half an inch to start this. Um, the thicker your section that you grab of hair, what happens is you pinch that hair together and you're already over directing it. So anytime then you take a new section, you get a diffused guideline because you're already, because you're smashing it all together. So to get the strongest guideline, you want to make sure that you're not over directing too much hair, pinching it in. So less than half an inch here to start. And I'm going to work that line. This is where it's gonna turn more into that 45 degrees off of the head shape. There's 90, right? So 45 is about here. That's the angle I wanna create. Uh, that'll start to build up that nice little bit of weight in there, which you can kind of see happening. I'll show you more in a little bit. So this is what I've cut so far, about an inch worth of hair. I'm gonna take half of that and push it away so I don't get involved with it. And I'm going to bring just the this new section quarter of an inch of hair into that previous. Bring it right here and cut my line. This is where the head starts to curve this way, right? So I don't want this to change. I want it to start to dip. So instead of going any more around this corner, I just bring everything straight back. It goes from going straight across to now dipping because the head shape, you're playing with that whole curve this way, not only the over direction. That's that side. So let's move to the side here. We're gonna do the same thing. So now you can see that nice dip. You can see that bob shape happening. See how that shape there works through to her jawline. I think I'm gonna work one more couple inch section, then we'll blow it dry because I really wanna get the shape in there. So I take my next two inch right at the division point. When I say division point, I just mean Basically, the middle of the ear divides the back and the front. So same thing, guys. I know it's uh, a little repetitive, but that's what cutting a precise bob is. So center, we're gonna go quarter of an inch again in the back, just like the previous panel that we cut. The only thing you wanna decide here is, do you want to keep building that weight from here out, or do you wanna start to round it up? right? Do you want the weight to sit a little higher or a little lower? That's all based on your elevation from this point. You've got the head curving. This is where we stopped cutting, right? So if you want it to be about 45 degrees, for me, that's going to be a, a, a little bit higher elevation than you would probably think. So I pull this out from the head here and I comb it up and pretty much straight out, but you could see if that's 90, that's about 45, right? So I just, it's not that you have to be that specific, but just know that the higher the elevation at this point, the lighter that um, graduation is gonna be. Like it's very easy to just now all of a sudden drop it down. And then you see it goes a little weird because I'm not at where my guy really is, but some people just cut that off um, just to move it in because that's where they think their hand should be. Trust what you're doing and the shape you're creating. As I round this corner, everything gets a little shorter, tighter here. So when I bring this back, I cut my line here, normal, but then right here, see where that disconnects right there? That's okay. Let it disconnect. That's gonna start to build our forward shape that we're getting here. You can see the flow of the weight and it starts to dive down right there. So I'm gonna do the same here. Blow drying, working with a flat wrap technique, wrapping it around the head. Really what I want to do is just form the hair to the head shape. So then when you it down, it's got that nice bevel already to it. Also helps smooth the hair nice. I'm just gonna work the iron into the hair and just smooth it out. Really just working with the head shape here. So the goal here is to look at the weight within the haircut. 
not to look at the shape on the outline. Like this, you can customize. Like you see people do like different uh, shapes within that, the hairline, all of that. It has nothing to do with like the actual shape of the haircut and you're not doing that within the wet cut. Now, you don't wanna go in here and just go full blown with your blade. What that's gonna do is push the hair and then you're gonna end up with shorter pieces than you wanted and you're not gonna get your line. So just go in, comb the hair down and I'll work with the scissor just like this and I'll start to etch the hair away. Little by little, use the tip of the scissor across this way. You're not pushing the hair and you get the line that you're going for. My biggest thing is really focusing right now on keeping that line balanced and following my weight line, which is above, which is here. So I want this line to match my weight line and it just keeps the haircut looking nice and balanced and to my eye looks the best. Then you can go in with a little bit flatter blade just to make the line a lot harder and sharper. We're gonna cut the sides. The sides are pretty simple because you stick to the very similar way of just bringing it straight back. And I will wet down just a little bit of this side as well. It was already dry. Just because I wanna have that consistency. There's a few different ways you can do this. If you want extra heaviness, then you could start here and just work your way across. I'm gonna lighten it and then I'm gonna shift into creating that line. So I'm gonna kind of follow it uh, diagonally. I think that'll work the best in this case. Um, it'll also really allow this hair here to lay nice and soft on the top. All right, so I take that parting and I connect that here. And I've got my disconnection. And then eventually I will be running out of hair that will reach back there. This is all behind the ear. Now I'm gonna take more hair I'm gonna work diagonal forward along that jawline and bring everything back to this point. So as of right now, that first section, there's not a whole lot to cut here. So I'll take another diagonal, bring it down to me, a little more to cut. So again, I'll just work a flat wrapping technique around the head. I'll just do a little bit of ironing real quick goal when you're smoothing hair to cut it dry is to make sure that there's no kinks and creases in it. So now we've got our dry, almost done bob. So what I want to do is just go in and just soften some of this heavy weight. This is very bulky, very squared off looking. So I'm going to bring that line in. What I want to do is I want to take some of this hair out just like this. And I'm gonna start underneath here and I'm gonna work, that's my perimeter line. So I want some of that to fall out. And then I'm gonna do a tease cutting technique, which is a half open, half close of the scissor, which just removes some of that bulk. This technique that I'm doing here creates more of a soft effect. Yes, you can do this on curly hair. Um, I actually really love this technique on curly hair and that the only reason I'm over it back is that keeps that triangular kind of forward feel to the haircut. So now it's already getting much lighter on the side. And instead of having this squared off feel, which was the old haircut, the old perimeter, I can now cut right into that line and create a more triangular perimeter. So I'm gonna go right into it. And then you can see with the tease cutting, it makes it nice and light on the edge as well. So that hair easily kind of comes back. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side.